We've all heard the saying, don't write checks that your mouth can't cash. Well, after last night, there's a new version. Don't write checks that your briefcase can't cash in after Carmela destroys it with a garbage truck. It really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Sorry, Red, but I proved what everyone already knew. Mela is money, and you'll always be trash. It's Red, and it appears she has a new accessory. Um, what is that? Did you make your own briefcase? Real cute, but I think you need to take your DIY and go di bye. I'm not going anywhere, because it's not the briefcase that matters. It's more symbolic than anything. What really matters is the contract inside that's good for a title match at any time. And I still have that, thanks to my disgusting yet loyal friend. There's no way this is legit. Actually, Randy Orton just signed off on it, so it's official. You can't do this. I destroyed your briefcase. This should not be happening. Sorry, princess, but it is. So what do you say we finish what we started? Red's cashing in. We're going to have a Raw Women's Championship match right now. I don't know about this. Carmella got the best of Red just 24 hours ago, and now Red might be setting herself up for a repeat. That could certainly happen, but throughout the years, Money in the Bank briefcase holders have cashed in at a highly successful rate. Let's see if Red can continue that trend here tonight. After what happened last night with Carmella destroying Red's briefcase, I certainly did not expect this. You gotta hand it to Red. Most people would have accepted the defeat and moved on, but not her. Carmella was absolutely blindsided. She thought she'd eliminated this threat to her title, but clearly she was wrong. Credit to Red for being one step ahead of the Staten Island Princess. Now, let's see if she can win the match. Otherwise, this was all just one big waste of time. Folks, the title is on the line in this one, and I can't remember a more highly anticipated title defense. One thing nobody could ever take away from Carmella is that she will forever be known as the first ever female to win a Money in the Bank ladder match. She's definitely etched her name in the history books, but Michael, let's not forget that her victory didn't come without its fair share of controversy. Nice deep arm drag. Gals, Carmella may be in a bad way here. She still has a lot of time to recover, though. Watch this here. Really a back suplex. She's bringing the pressure on now. She's got the skill to go on runs. Now we'll see if she has the stamina. Leave it to Saxton to call Carmella's Money in the Bank victory controversial. Of course, you also failed to mention Carmella backed that win up with a second Whoa. Money in the Bank ladder match victory just days later. I definitely give Carmella Two. credit for that one, Corey, but I can't justify the first victory. Wendy Richter, Trish Stratus, Sherry Martell, Lita. So many great Hall of Famers helped make the Women's Championship the prestigious prize it is today. Bringing it back Three. into the ring. Once again, this match is about the women's title. Oh, again! Incredible athleticism. The champ looking worn out. She needs to turn the tide here. Carmella just barely got out of the way. Suplex! She 
She's slowing down here, guys. Slowing down. She's stuck in park, Cole. This has been such a back and forth matchup. She looks like she's willing to do anything to end this thing. She may have to. These two have battled back and forth, thrown everything they have at one another. But what on earth is next? Steadily climbing. What could she possibly be thinking? All the way to the top! Ah! We can have a new champion! It's gonna be hard for Carmella to come back now. Shoulders down. Championship on the line! successfully cashed in a replacement Money in the Bank briefcase to become the new Raw Women's Champion. What an amazing 24 hours this has been for Red. I hate to say it, but you have to give some credit to her pal Trey, who apparently went dumpster diving to salvage the Money in the Bank contract. This is yet another tremendous achievement for Red to cross off the list she shares with Trey. It's become increasingly apparent that it's not just a piece of paper. It's the driving force behind Red's meteoric rise to the top. And so it is with great honor that I induct the package deal, Red and Trey, into the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> no. Wow. Thank oh, you. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you guys so much. All right. Almost 20 years ago, we were a couple of not so popular high school kids who bonded over our love of WWE and became best friends. But we never thought it was possible that someday we'd be WWE superstars ourselves, let alone stand on this stage tonight being honored as two of the very best of all time. By the way, I totally thought we could do it. He didn't. Going off script already, huh? Well, that didn't take long. Fine. Where was I? Here we go. But one day at lunch, we made a list. This piece of notebook paper would become the roadmap to our success in WWE. It contained our goals, hopes, and wildest dreams. And it changed everything. Over the years, we added a lot of new things to the list, and pretty much everything got crossed off except for one huge final achievement. Get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And unless anyone in charge has a last minute change of heart, I think it's safe to say that will be crossed off in a little while. I'm not gonna say this is a bigger achievement for me than it is for my friend, but let's be honest. When I first got to WWE, not many of you thought I was Hall of Fame material. What he's trying to say is he wasn't exactly the most respected superstar in the locker room. <laughs> well, let's face it, no one other than you liked me. But a lot of that was my fault. I was brash and confident, but didn't have the experience to back it up. Sure, I had a universal title win, but it was mostly considered a fluke. And when it came to the list and my career goals, I really only cared about crossing off the fun things that came along with being a WWE superstar. Winning dance contests, getting an action figure, a cool t-shirt, being in a video game, a movie. <laughs> Which, of course, brings me to The Miz. What's up, buddy? I see you. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of parallels between our personalities, which explains why I wasn't that liked, and also why we made such good adversaries. I mean, who could forget our legendary battle over the lead role in Rank and File 4? I am definitely auditioning. It's one of my OG list items, star in a WWE action movie. I think I'm gonna pass. Are you kidding? Do I need to remind you that the rank and file films are cinematic masterpieces? No. You mention that every year on that weird holiday you invented where you binge all of them from start to finish. You mean Thanksgiving Day? It's the most heart pounding, action packed, explosive day of the year. And it's gonna catch on. You'll see. I wouldn't get your hopes up, all you wannabe movie stars. Because I already have the lead role of Bryce Decker locked in for the fourth 
consecutive film. I mean, do you really think the rank and file franchise could continue without the most accomplished WWE superstar slash actor in history? The answer is no, people. But please, feel free to audition for a bit part or an extra role. I'll be sure to put in a good word for you with the director. Gotta run. Getting my eyes bleached for the big shoot coming up. Really gonna make these baby blues pop on screen. Break a leg. Sorry, this isn't my thing, but I know how excited you were. Hmm. Honestly, the franchise is probably better off in the hands of a seasoned artist like The Miz. You were right. It was a stupid dream. <sighs> you know what? I changed my mind. Let's audition together. It'll be fun. Really? Yeah. Let's give it our best shot, and maybe we can get supporting roles, or background would be fine too, even deep background where we're out of focus and no one can see me. Oh, that would still be cool. And just imagine all the kids' faces when they see us in the movie next year on Thanksgiving Day. They'll light up with explosions and excitement. I'm still not sure that's catching on like you think it is. Welcome back to the Buzz and Cole Show, and we are talking... Working title. Cole, we've been doing this podcast for like two years now. I think it's safe to say at this point, we're sticking with that name. Hey, I thought it was going to be Mr. CQ forever. And then I switched to Black Hole Cole, and then just regular Cole. So you never know when you might undergo a name change. And besides, at one point, didn't they talk about changing your name to The Buzz Encounter? Well, that's a story for a different episode. What I want to talk about is what shocked everyone last week, and that was Trey from NXT showing up on Raw and beating Samoa Joe for the Universal title. I mean, talk about a debut. Yeah, it reminded me of when I first debuted in Japan. I also showed up out of nowhere and beat their uh, solar system champion, Fiji Tom. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, okay, you're clearly just making that up. Hey, you were busy flirting with Charlotte on SmackDown when I debuted in Japan, so how would you even know? Okay, I watched your matches on the internet, Cole, and Charlotte and I are just friends, so I wouldn't call it flirting. What'd you call it? Wooing? Ugh. See what I did there? Woo! And yet again, we are absurdly off topic. Woo! Sorry, once you start wooing, it's almost impossible to stop. Woo! Okay. Woo! Woo! <sighs> Are you done? Almost. Woo! Okay. I'm good now. Please, continue. All right. Back to trade defeating... Woo! S Sorry. Instead of worrying about movie auditions, maybe you should focus on defending your Raw Women's Championship. Thanks for the advice, but I'm confident I can handle both. Maybe you feel that way because you've been facing subpar competition since you won that title last year. So how about you step up and take on someone who can actually challenge you? Who do you have in mind? Is that a serious question? I'm talking about the EST of WWE. I'll see you in the ring.
The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Raw Women's Championship. Since winning the Raw Women's Championship, Red has defended her title against all challengers. This is the first time, however, that she faces an opponent with the athleticism of Bianca Belair. You know, it sounds cliche, but these two are driven to be the best. That alone should create an ultra-competitive matchup tonight. If Red takes this likely, not only can she part ways with her title, she could also become the new EST of WWE, as in latest to lose to Bianca Belair. She seems to have gained the advantage here. She's always been a woman capable of great bursts of activity. Corey, how exactly can an opponent compete against Bianca Belair's impressive athleticism? Well, the EST emanates confidence. If her opponent can prove to be stronger, faster, tougher, or better, for just one second, it's going to shake Belair. It's not going to be easy to make a crack in Belair's ego and disrupt that swagger. Oh, foot just stomping down. Stop! That'll ruin your leg. Challenger's a little worse for wear now. She can withstand the punishment, though. Oh, nice deep arm drag. I gotta say, guys, Bianca Belair has wasted little time making a name for herself. I mean, from the minute she walked in the door, the entire women's division stood up and took notice. Whoa. Back now inside the ring. The cha Whoa! Boot salt! Did you see that height? Oh! Again! Look at the agility. As Byron mentioned, Bianca Belair's impact has been immediate. From her very first match in the 2017 May Young Classic, Bianca has been opening eyes. Yeah, and it's worth noting that in the first round of the May Young Classic, she gave up four inches and about 40 pounds to her opponent, but still won. That's a testament to Belair's immense strength. Power bomb! And into the count. We're about to see the standings. Here's the pin title on the line. Here we go. One, two, three. The champion retains. Great. Here is your winner. Watching her perform, there's something the seriously wrong with me. Champion Ace Thunder. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That was a huge win. Hey, she was the better woman of the two tonight. It's that simple. Guys, I've literally got chills after watching that thrilling championship match. Sorry, but I'm just a little nervous with the star of the rank and file franchise here. Oh, don't mind me. I just wanted a sneak peek at what's going to end up on the blooper reel. You'll be fine. Besides, pressure makes diamonds. Or in this case, comedy gold. So, I know you didn't give out script pages before the auditions, but when do I get to see the lines? You don't, because you're going off book. I want you to feel it here, by completely immersing yourself in the character. Now, I'll read a line, and you tell me what our hero's response should be. This should be good. The antidote is hidden in the vending machine, but it's jammed. Looks like we're going to need to buy a lot of candy if we want to get sweet revenge. Perfect! That's exactly what I was envisioning. Now let's continue. Yeah. 
I know I pronounced you dead a half hour ago, but we need to know where Donnie's gang is hiding out. I saw it in a vision when I was dead. They're in a building that has a large white star on it. Also, your grandfather says hi, and that he approves of your lifestyle. Yes! You absolutely nailed it! Beginner's luck! Okay, last one. The bomb is wired inside of Chloe's jet ski. So you're going to have to make a decision. Stay here so I don't get away, or go save her and a bunch of innocent dolphins. What's it going to be? I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Those are bomb-disabling dolphins, so the only one who's going to be sleeping with the fishes is you. Brilliant! It's almost like you saw the script ahead of time. Unbelievable! Maybe you could play gang member number two or henchman number five. Not anyone with an actual name. <laughs> okay, miss. Now that Trey has dazzled me with his intuitive performance, it's your turn to audition. Are you kidding? This must be a prank, right? Did they bring back Swerved? No, this isn't a joke. But I'm the star of the rank and file franchise. You can't potentially recast me. I even have a Bryce Decker tattoo on my inner left thigh. I thought this so-called audition was just a part of your stupid hippity-dippity process. I assure you, it's very real. So if you're that confident in your ability, then please show me. Fine. But can I at least see the script pages? <laughs> that wouldn't be fair. I want you to feel it here. Don't touch me! Don't mind me. Sit down, shut up, and watch how a real Hollywood star performs this part. Proceed, director! The terrorists are inside the arena, disguised as the opening band. You need to do something to stop them. We need to create a diversion. What kind of concert is this? Rock? Country? Hip-hop? I could really use some context. Don't worry about all that. Just immerse yourself in the character. Yeah, Miz. Immerse. Shut up. I think the only way we're gonna stop them as if we band together. Uh, puns are a bit too expected and broad for my taste. Too broad? A few minutes ago, this no-talent hack was babbling on about bomb-disabling dolphins. It rang true when he said it. Look, in the spirit of positivity, I think it's time for you to move on to a new artistic challenge. This is unbelievable. You'll be getting a call from my agent, my entertainment lawyer, and my regular lawyer. I actually don't have a phone, but I'd be happy to meet with them in person at my treehouse in the woods outside of Austin. Unbelievable! I'll call you. I, I just made up that whole treehouse thing to get rid of him. Brilliant. Before we get started, you should know, I'm just doing this to support a friend of mine, so I thought I'd just stand here for a couple of minutes so he thinks I auditioned. That work for you? Unconventional, but I like where you're going with this. Very avant-garde. No, you don't, you don't get it. I really don't want to part. The reluctant heroine. I dig it. No. I don't know how else to say this. I don't want to be in your movie. Sorry I'm late. The idiot I was sparring with accidentally scratched me, so I had to fire him. Then he started crying, saying how he couldn't believe his own daughter would do this to him, blah, blah, blah. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, hey, Red. 
didn't recognize you. Guess I just thought you were the director's homely assistant his wife forced him to hire so he's not tempted to cheat on her. Tried that, didn't work. Why are you here? This is my turf. Believe me, I would have preferred to do this just about anywhere else, but I'm here because I'm using my MMA success to dabble in Hollywood. Kind of like Ronda Rousey did, only way better. Brooklyn's already been cast as our female lead, Miranda. You know what? Let's have the two of you workshop the scene where Miranda's daughter is kidnapped from the playground, and you're the stubborn crossing guard who won't let her cross the street illegally to chase after the kidnappers. Seriously? And... action. The kidnappers are getting away with Emily. I need to stop them! I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't let you cross the street until the walk signal appears. I'm just doing my job. Yeah. Well, a mother's job is never done. Going off script with the slap, but I like it. Use that anger, Red. If you ever touch me again, the only movies you'll appear in will be the instructional kind for plastic surgeons on how to fix faces that are bludgeoned beyond recognition. Maybe a tad extreme? <sighs> cut, cut, that's a wrap. <sighs> Is anyone filming this? Is anyone? Get me a camera. Get me a camera now. Dig deep. Does that take you back anywhere? That was so honest! Beautiful! Beautiful! This is going to wash away the taste of shame from the last time in Park City. <gasps> Just like old times. <laughs>